Today, in 2015, I am celebrating my centennial birthday. I can't begin to convey to you how that makes me feel. If my walls could talk, they would tell you so much about the past 100 years. So many wonderful years, so many incredible students and dedicated staff. A flood of memories, if my walls could talk. Our school was named after the Earl Kitchener, who was the British Secretary of State during the First World War. Construction of the Earl Kitchener School began in 1913 and the first students were registered in the fall of 1915. At that time, the population of Hamilton was approximately 100,000 and the mayor was Chester Samuel Walters. Life was much simpler then. Bread cost six cents a loaf, milk cost 53 cents for six quarts, and a dozen eggs were 34 cents. Well, Earl Kitchener was the first time I experienced being away from my mom. 1929, when I started here the next September. So I was a little old. Uh, instead of starting when I was uh, four and a half or whatever, to start a little later. Well, I started here when I was five, kindergarten, and I, I've, I always loved school. I loved, I loved Earl Kitchener. Well, of course, I met my best friend here in grade three, and we're still friends. We stood up for one another in our weddings, and her children call me their aunt, even though we're not. We say that we're uh, kindred spirits. Well, this school has always been a very sort of vibrant center of the community. Uh, and it's, it's one where uh, people have made friends, long-lasting friendships. I've watched people who started off working on little committees who are still friends now. Well, I started in Earl Kitchener in grade three. That was 1953. I came to live with my grandmother on Charlton Avenue, which was my dad's home where he grew up. And I... I don't know if it was a favorite memory, but I remember just being here a week, the first week I was here, and I was sent to the principal's office because I went out of bounds on the playground on the other side of the tree. And I, I just, that's what I remember most, I think. <laughs> and I met my best friend here that, uh, I, um, that I've known forever. I began Earl Kitchener in 1962. Uh, my family lived across the street at 285 Dundurn Street South, which is now where the apartment building is. And I always tell the story that when we heard the bell ring, we left, uh, unless we wanted to play in the back, of course. Well, the school's been part of my entire life. I first came here as a kindergarten student in the fall of 1964. It was a place that taught me to learn and to love books and uh, to think about broad horizons and uh, it has continued to play a role in my life up until the present time. We've had three kids educated here, two of whom continue to go to school here and uh, from great teachers to inspiring principals to a circle of friends that have endured in my life, this place has uh, made a difference for 50 years in my case because I'm 55 this year and I came here as a five-year-old. The first time I came to Earl Kitchen was 1977. And I came into grade four. A lot of the friends that I have today are still the kids that I grew up with here. Uh, my best friend, Roy Holmes, was a classmate of mine back in 1977, one of the very first people I met. And him and I are still very close to this day. So I came here in grade three, and so I was here in grade three, four, and five, and graduated in 1981. My husband said to me this morning, oh, I think it was 100 years ago we went to that school. <laughs> we moved here when I was in grade four, so that was 1982. So I was here for grade four and five. Um, we lived right across the street on Homewood, so I can remember not having to come across to school until the bell actually rang. So I went here as a kid um, and started preschool here, actually. There was a neighborhood co-op preschool that was operating in the basement, so started at age five, no four probably here, um, and then all the way through, and um, family very involved, parents involved in the school, and my husband actually went here as well, so we went to preschool together as well and did Earl Kitchener, so, um, so we have a really special connection to the school and the neighborhood and the community. I would say my first Earl Kitchener memory was meeting the staff and just realizing that the staff here had been a 
in the school and it were an institution of the school for so long that there were so many staff members that had not only been here for many years but had spent their whole career at that at the school and are still here and that made an amazing impression on me because I thought it this must be a, a great building if they're still here and continue to be. Coming here myself as a student um, I I obviously, I, I've experienced it as, as a student and as a teacher, so it's, it's interesting to see the two sides. Um, it's a very tight-knit community. Um, you don't find that in a lot of French immersion schools. A lot of French immersion schools you might find uh, the, the boundary is much larger for children learning in French immersion. We're, we're tight. We're a tight school. <laughs> yeah. Today, I am happy to say that I've stood my ground proudly for an entire century. I owe my strength to the community, banding together for the sake of the students, their parents, and the faculty. The vibrancy of this school is reflected in the children. I love this school. I don't know, I just think, I know it sounds, uh, you know, the proverbial, always wanted to be a teacher scenario. I always wanted to be a teacher from a very young age. Very lucky to have come here. Very obviously, I've never left. I care. I care about the kids that come to school. I want to care about what goes on when they go home and how that affects what happens to them at school. Um, I feel in my new role that I'm also helping the parents work through that as well. So if we meet and we can talk about what we see in the day, then we can also help the parents, you know, move forward with, with issues that are going outside of school. Madame Prevac, she helped me in, during hard times and like really hard times when I, when I was when I was being bullied and it, it helped a lot because it helped it helped actually me help me trust more people. It's something it's something I didn't know people know knew about me. But it's good, right? It's what I try to do. Both my sons went to Earl Kitchener. Uh, my older son went through the French immersion program went straight from uh, junior kindergarten to grade five and then continued on to the middle school. My younger son, who is uh, special education, uh, was here from, uh, I think, senior card kindergarten up until grade five. And I remember one in particular with my younger son, um, a friend of his, another fellow, actually held his hand through the whole ceremony so that he would stay still enough to be able to sing their song and uh, that that was one of the best moments that, uh, that I could have seen him up on stage. We've gone through quite a, a, a bit uh, of, you know, challenging uh, times and as a school we're very resilient and, you know, are weathering the storm. Um, we want to be careful that we don't overwhelm um, staff uh, and that we maintain, you know, the well-being of uh, students and their academic achievement. Schools are the lifeblood of a community. They are the beating heart of a community. Children are citizens of a community. And it's at school that children figure out who they are and how to relate to one another and how to be good contributing citizens. Parents entrust their children to school. And they're very sacred places for that reason. Uh, at a school like Royal Kitchener, we see what a vibrant school does for a community. It enlivens a community and it brings light and hope and uh, positive vibrations to a community. Well, I, my favorite thing about the school is that everybody is just so friendly. The teachers are so nice and are so helpful when you need something. They, if, you, like, if you ask them a question about something they said previously, they're not going to get upset that you weren't listening. Earl Kitchener is special to us because my daughter, Lily, goes to school here, um, and her father, Luke Rutterham, also went to school here in the 80s and 90s. Um, and I myself own a bakery that's situated across the street, so we picked this neighborhood uh, specifically because it was a great family neighborhood, and Earl Kitchener is a big part of that. I like them. I like outside. I like how it has slides and monkey bars and stuff. You. Unicorn. Umbrella. 
unhappy under unicycle <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that one like you just get to do so many activities and it's just so much fun so play stuff the play structure on the back. I like the big way slide, it's the fastest. The big way one. The big one. The big one. Do you know why? Because it's much faster than the little ones. Because every winter there's ice at the bottom. Slippy, 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 slip, slippy ice. My favorite thing about Earl Kitchener is it has such a sense of community. Everything is put together very well. C'est encore moi, l'école Earl Kitchener. Je suis la première école des environs à avoir proposé un programme d'immersion en français dans les années 70. Je suis alors devenue très populaire, accueillant les enfants du voisinage et d'ailleurs. Formidable, non? Earl Kitchener does have a component of the French immersion. We also have a dual track because not only do we have our French immersion piece, we also have our English piece. Uh, so we have a dual track school which makes us kind of very unique as well. Cette année, c'est l'anniversaire uh, centième de Earl Kitchener School et c'est une des meilleures écoles à, à Hamilton. Qu'est-ce que tu aimes de ton école, Earl Kitchener? Jack? J'aime le lake house parce que je jouais avec les, les amis. Bravo, Jack, merci. Bonne chance à tous les élèves de l'école en Kitchener. Um, je vous souhaite une bonne vie et beaucoup de joie dans la vie. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Joyeux anniversaire et cool Earl Kitchener. Fright Night is an event that happens every year in October on the Saturday before Halloween. It is one of our best fundraisers. By far, it is the favorite community event that we host for students, teachers, and parents. And we even welcome everyone from the community to join the fun. It is a night to celebrate Halloween festivities, and there are lots of tricks, treats, ghosts, and goblins, too. If someone picks them oh, yeah. up and draws them for me, I'll read them out and then we'll tape them to it. That would be easier for me. And then you can... I'll be typing them. them in at the same time. Okay. And then people just come over and check their ticket. Uh, one ticket gets you five. You split it down the middle, you fold it half. But one in each of the toys you want to win in the draw set of the end Uh, I've had a lot of actually Earl Kitchener memories. Uh, I started here in September, and one of the one of my favorite uh, ones that I can recall is having the kids go to Aberdeen Gardens at Halloween. And there is a Halloween parade, and we parade down Dundurn, all of the classes, and uh, we go into the Aberdeen Gardens, and the residents get to see the kids come through with their costumes. It's called Fright Night. As kids we, you know, we couldn't wait for Fright Night as a student and um, have vivid memories of the haunted house the way it was set up downstairs. So it was in a different room, it wasn't in the gym as it is now. I every Fright Night I help my mom. Trey was. was it scary? I'm enriched with culture and the arts happily thriving within such a strong and supportive community. The school spirit is alive and well and is evident in our many special programs and events. So, so
Well, my primary connection is through uh, the band uh, Turkey Rhubarb. Uh, we've been singing here at the school for the last four or five years and uh, always having a lot of fun with that and uh, with the, the kindergartners in particular. And yeah, so that's the, that's the, the prime connection. It's a great school to sing in, uh, always a, a wonderful audience and great, uh, we have, we've developed a nice connection with the staff. I had no idea that Erno Kitchener was turning 100, but I was able to, to create a, uh, a fundraising campaign uh, and get people on board. The project is fantastic, the music is fantastic. Um, the organizers did a fabulous job, the contributors did a fabulous job. Um, we were honoured to get involved. When I initially put together my, my proposal, I said maybe a slogan like OKEK -OK would be good, and I know there's songwriters out there, so maybe you could run with something OKEK -OK and write a song, not knowing, you know, what, what would happen. And I don't want to obligate artists too, too much for this, but um, Glenn Barrett, got back to me and said, I have a song. Uh, it just came out called OKEK. -OK. And, uh, and sure enough, like I lent him some recording gear and in a few weeks he came back with a template for the song. And uh, so we listened to it and realized that, you know, there's a school choir. It might sound good to have the kids singing along. So OKEK, -OK, the theme song was born. Uh, the money made with the CD we bought uh, ukuleles for the school, so now I've started the ukulele program. One, two, three, four. Mary had a little and G, little and C, little and G, Mary had a little and G, little and G, If my walls could talk, they would tell you that we hope to still be here to see the changes over the next hundred years. They would tell you that we've absolutely loved the past 100 years and look to the future with wide open arms. May we never forget the magic that is contained here and the rich history steeped within the fibers of this grand school. My hopes for students in a hundred years are that they continue to, to do their best and to have wonderful relationships within the school with their peers and their teachers and to have fond memories. I suspect it's still going to be here. I, I'm sure it will be different in terms of what happens in the actual classroom and the vehicles by which we deliver great education. Uh, but most importantly, I suspect it will remain a place that is a great leveler from kids from across the spectrum of backgrounds. It will be a place that aspires to great things and it will and still in its students, as it did in my generation, a sense that anything is possible if you work hard. My hope is that, you know, um, our school uh, continue to be a uh, beacon um, within the community uh, to, you know, continue meeting those uh, priorities and the needs of the community and the nation as a whole. My hopes is that for the next hundred years that Earl Kitchener remains uh, part of the community here and that any student that is going through uh, the Earl Kitchener schooling that they leave the school with academic success and they have great social emotional skills as they leave the school and that they go out into the community and that they are, are continuing to be lifelong learners and enjoying and having a very fulfilling uh, life. If it is here in 100 years, it might not be here in 100 years, but if it is here, I think that there will be very high-tech equipment at Earl Kitchener, like robots. Uh, maybe robots. Yeah, maybe robots, but probably not aliens. <laughs> I don't know if there is even going to be a line here. It might change into something else. Like turn into zombies. Exo-zombies. Advanced Warfare exo-zombies. Not even here. I'm hoping it'll stay the same, maybe, like mostly with the architecture. In a hundred years, it's going to be, I think, an even more diverse school community. So West Hamilton is changing very fast. There are families moving into West Hamilton from all over the world, speaking all kinds of languages. So today in the classrooms that I was visiting, I met 
kids who speak Japanese and Italian and Vietnamese and Latvian and Mohawk. And I think in 100 years, we're going to see even more languages, even more cultures, even more religions represented at Old Kitchener School. What's our mission?